This video is going to be a basic primer in economics. And to make it real clear, I thought I'd use something funny and cute so that you can remember this, always associated with this picture. This picture is of a can of tomatoes. I've used that example a lot in my websites over the last 15 years. This particular can of tomatoes, I swear to you, depends on your own taste, of course, is the best tasting can of tomatoes on the planet. The other two that are good are Rotel and Red Gold. Red Gold, they have some kind of lining in their tomatoes, in the cans of their tomatoes, so that the metal taste doesn't get into the tomatoes. The same thing is true for these fire roasted salsa sold by Walmart. You can't buy this anywhere else. Okay? Now, as you'll notice, up here in the upper right-hand corner, it says 98 cents for the can of tomatoes, and it's out of stock. That's normally true. I have been riding Walmart for over a year now saying, hi, why don't you sell these by the case online? Okay? Sell them online. Okay. All over the all over the all the Walmarts. This was true when I lived in Chicago. This is true now that I live of course in Texas. Th these things are always out of stock. So they're popular. You got that. If they're always out of stock, that means people are always buying them. You'll notice that the the reviews that there are six reviews, one of which is mine, and that it's got five stars. That's because these taste so good. They don't have that canned tomato taste. They, As you can see in the picture, there's a certain amount of olive taste in it. Very good, strong olive taste. If you're into Mexican taste, specifically Tex-Mex, these are really good. But you can't get them. They're out of stock. So much for the commercial part. I've established that there's a can of tomatoes, and I've established that this is a good tasting can of tomatoes. I've also established that they're sold, sold, sold by Walmart and sold a lot, right? Now, what is the price? 98 cents. Pretty much everywhere. I mean, if I was, when I was in, you know, Illinois, they were costing a dollar. It was rounded to a dollar. A dollar for a can of tomatoes. This particular can, but we'll just say a can of tomatoes costs a buck. Now we're going to go into the economics lesson. If you buy this can of tomatoes, you are paying a business here, Walmart, to get that can of tomatoes, correct? If I go to Walmart or I could buy it online, I would pay a dollar and Walmart would send me the can of tomatoes. Walmart is a business. It has employees. It hires whoever it hires to make these tomatoes and put them in cans for Walmart. And it's branded by Sam Walton's Walmart, which is like Sam's Club, right? Great value brand. Those are all businesses which hire people and get products and package them and sell them to people, correct? And you say, oh, brain out, you're being too simple. Well, yeah, but we have to be simple. Here's why. Walmart is a business. It is a, an American business. So it has to pay taxes to the federal government because there are laws on the books that say, hi, if you're a business in the United States, there is a federal income tax on you as a business. Now, where is the business 
going to get the money to pay the income tax to the federal government. Well, for this can of tomatoes and anything else it sells to you, you are paying the income tax. That's where Walmart gets its money, is from you and from all the other individuals who buy Walmart products. So here's a dollar, right? A dollar. What is the income tax? that Walmart must pay the federal government on that can of tomatoes. Okay? Well, if it has no deductions, just like you when you pay your income tax, you get deductions. And according to all the Republican and Democratic candidates running for office now, they would eliminate deductions. Okay, so what are their proposals for a business tax? Well, most of them range from about 16%, that's Ted Cruz, to about 20%, that's Jeb Bush. So now, think about this. If there are no deductions, Jeb Bush would preserve the deductions. So actually, his tax is lower than 20 and lower than 16. It's more like 10. So let's take Jeb Bush's proposed income tax on business, which is the lowest of the group, basically. Okay? So let's say that Jeb Bush's proposal of income tax on business ended up being 10 cents, 10 percent. Then this can of tomatoes that you paid a dollar for, 10 cents of that dollar went to pay for the income tax Walmart would have to pay the federal government. The other 90 cents, 50 cents of the 90 went to pay the salaries of Walmart employees employed in getting that can of tomatoes to you. The other approximately 20 cents, so out of the remaining 90, 70 cents is going to pay for the delivery of the tomatoes to you. So about 20 cents of the remaining 90 cents is actually for the tomatoes. That's true for any product you buy. About 20% of the product you buy, any kind of product, is actually the product. Everything else is the cost of handling it, the cost of getting it into a package like this and delivering it to you. That's true for almost anything. And what you can do is you can go to a thing called Moody's and go look up their um, statistical abstracts for the cost of goods sold versus the actual price that's paid. About 10, well, it's really more than that in current law, about 10, 20, 30 percent of everything you buy is going to the federal government for taxes. Taxes. The federal government collects taxes from business. So if I were to include all the employee taxes that the federal government gets that Walmart has to pay, then about 30 cents of this dollar is going to the federal government for taxes that Walmart has to pay the federal government. Okay, so when you buy this can of tomatoes, you are paying for the taxes that Walmart has to pay the federal government, or it has no money to pay the federal government. You get that, right? So now let's think over what would happen if there were no business taxes. Well, if there were no business taxes, then this, this can of tomatoes wouldn't be a dollar. 
it would be 70 cents. 20 cents of which is the actual tomatoes. And the other 50 cents would be the actual salaries for the employees who are employed to deliver and bring to you the can of tomatoes. But now you're not paying a dollar. Now it's 30% cheaper to you to buy the can of tomatoes or pretty much anything else you buy if there were no business taxes. So now, should you vote for any freaking candidate, Democrat, Republican, Independent, from the elephant, pink elephant party, should you vote for any candidate who says there ought to be a tax on business? Think about it.